I, I don't think we have to go through any definitions of um, what sovereignty is all about and, and go through the politics of what's going on. We all know what's going on. And um, I, I just want to concentrate on just telling you what we've done at home. Because we, we back on country, um, the people are saying, OK, you know, you're down there in Canberra talking about all this high pollutant stuff. You go to meetings all over the place, <coughs> and all they are are talk fests. And it's really doing nothing for us on the ground, absolutely nothing. And so the people are saying, well, how do we achieve the things that we want to do? And so over the last three years, I've been working back home with my, my own mob, um, the Uwaliai and the Western Gummeroy people, which I belong to. And so they all want to understand what a revolution is, how do we break from revolution? What is a colonized mind? How do we free ourselves? Because they're talking about wanting to go back learning their culture, learn their language. And we've now got these programs in place where all of this is starting to happen. And it's the initiatives of the local people, not anywhere out there. So I've done, they said, you stay at the, up there, fight the politicians and keep them out of our country. So what we've done, in 2013, we pulled the, all the senior elders together of the families who belonged to our nation at a little town called Durrambandi. And um, we had about 30 people there, consisting of four clan groups. And uh, the elders from there and the young ones that they wanted, that those elders wanted to bring. And, uh, and our way is that those elders will, t will bring the ones they want to talk. You don't, you don't automatically appoint yourself as a speaker or, or someone. Those one, they will bring someone with them, and that's what they did. And so we set up and um, set up a, um, a most senior elders council together with an executive government to consist of the young ones. And they wrote a wrote a letter to Queen Elizabeth II, and they said, "Well, we don't write to." anybody in Australia because we don't recognise Australia, the head of power to the Constitution of New South Wales and in the Commonwealth of Australia is Queen Elizabeth. She represents the Crown, 13 families. And so we sent the letter to Queen Elizabeth putting our demands down and saying what we want and that this is our country and this is how it's our country. And. Um, and the people said, well, you know, they, we have a word called ringin', but the whitefellas don't know what that means. And so that's our, the appointed leader to do all that other, all the stuff at the top. And normally it would be the magic and all the, all the ceremonial leadership. And in this case, <coughs> they just adopted the whitefellas word because we want to, don't want to use our own at this point because it goes beyond what the white man understands. And so they just said head of state. And so they appointed me to that. Now, when we wrote that letter uh, to the Queen, it was signed by all those elders, not me. It was signed by the elders. And they were nominating who the people were that they need to come back to and talk to, and um, of which I'm one. And the Queen did write back as head of state on behalf of, us, on behalf of um, this country, saying that She's handed it over to her representative in Australia, the Governor-General, who is her proxy in this country. And she called me, she don't, we don't write letters to anybody now. In our white name, we write letters to people in our Aboriginal names. And uh, she wrote back to me as Head of State, Giller. Now, <coughs> having gone then back to London after that, and talking with people and doing more research, one of the things we realise is that that Queen has created a bit of a complication for Australia just by a single act. And that single act is a, a bit of a uh, licence of license in legal trickery. And um, it was that as um, soon as she identified um, myself and the others as, um, and recognised the head of state and recognised the council, then she's recognised our sovereign status as a people. 
Since then, in the last two years, all we've been doing is um, writing letters to the New South Wales Government and to the Commonwealth Government talking about jurisdictional matters over land and uh, uh, policing and, and land tenures inside our country. And um, right now, New South Wales are in a bit of a, a panic because Berejiklian and we, they've been buying land back. The white people are moving out of our country because they're putting all the land up for sale. And um, a lot of the land is up, up now and the government are the ones who are actually buying the land back off the farmers. And um, what we're doing is that um, last week we wrote, well, about, about a month ago, we wrote a letter to Berejiklian and saying, you got the land from us by theft. You got the land off us by murdering our people. You shot them at a place called Osborne Creek and you benefited from the proceeds of a crime. And as a consequence of that benefit, you've profited and we're the losers. And so we told Berejiklian that one of those properties, that uh, three of those properties you just bought back, we're now taking possession of it. And so we cut the locks on one oh, of the properties. And the young fellows who volunteered to go out said, well, what if the police come? And we said, good, I want them to arrest you. And of course, you know, you can understand the response from <laughs> my, my brothers <laughs> and sisters. And they said, um, what do we do? Anyway, we, we've done it and no police came. And we occupy the land. We're about to take over three others the same way. But we wrote a letter telling the Premier that we're doing it anyway. And the Governor, we told them that we're taking the land back because you've got it. And so they, we want them to come in and tell us that we can't do that because um, they have title to the land and we want them to arrest them. Um, but they, they, I think they understand the trickery that I'm trying to sort of invoke here. And that is, I want to get them to argue how they got the land from us. Because there's a couple of very high, high court cases in this country that we can turn backwards on them. Um, and that's in relation to one was where they, where the Chief Justice Stevens said that there was no conveyancing of land ever done in this country because there were no owners, no proprietors. And Mabo messed that case right up. And so now we're forcing, forcing their arm. The, uh, the next week we're meeting again with, the, um, with that mob. And all the people who, um, who represent, who've been educated and got, um, you know, degrees and have various professions from our people, we've invited them all back home next week and they're coming back next week to Walgett where we'll have a meeting on the Barwon River. We're not meeting in the town, we're meeting on the river. Um, and um, basically what the elders there want to tell them is that um, if you've got a profession, you've got expertise that you can offer to us back home here, well then offer it to us back here. You lose the right to talk for country if you're off country and you're not going to participate and become part of um, revolutionising uh, the process of taking back that which they took off us. And so we're saying if you, outside of our country, outside the country, you can be part of it, but you must always come home for meetings. You must always participate at, on country. We don't want you to talk from Sydney. We don't want you to talk from Melbourne or wherever you live. You talk on country. That's the only place you have a right to talk. And so the rules are starting to be um, reasserted. And this is just an action by one group of people which has a population of about three and a half thousand, four thousand people. And so it's, it's asserting sovereign rights on, on our country. Um, even to the point now where there's one little township with a whole number of um, um, vacant crown blocks on it. <coughs> the, um, the young ones who are part of this have gone to the Shire Council, identified what blocks of land they are, gone to the white people in that little community. There's only about 12 white people living in that little community, but it's the chosen one place, ours. 
and they said we're taking up possession of all this land around here and we're going to start building our own places on this land and we're taking it back. And so the Walgershire Council after a week came back to the group when we had a meeting and said um, we got nothing to do with this, that's your business. Uh, so they've stepped out of it. And uh, we've all also told the Premier of New South Wales again, and who sent uh, correspondence to the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, and the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs' response to us as in writing was that um, if you want to deal with land issues, well then you talk to the Minister for Lands. And so they're all passing the buck now, but not knowing exactly what to do or how to do it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to create this confrontation. Um, but they're moving aside and they're not doing anything yet. But they will do something because we're just going to keep vacant land. We're just, every time something becomes vacant now and goes in the name of the Crown, we just take possession on our own country. Um, so it's... It's a moving, moving. Uh, it's a living organism that we've created of self-governance, of being self-determined. And so, you know, we can we can sit down here and we can talk about all the things that we want to do and all our ambitions. But if we're not prepared to do it, well, then you know that's all we'll be doing forever and a day is talking, and we'll grow old talking. We'll grow old with nothing. We'll uh, we'll uh, grow old aspiring for certain things. And so um, it, it, it's, it's a pleasure to see old people and young people now back home coming together and sort of doing these things. And their next move now is, you know, getting right into the young ones, taking them out bush and start doing it. Because we've got enough knowledge back home with all, that, all our knowledge to put them through, to teach them. It's all there. And, um, and so now, um, and it, it, it's quite, quite strange, actually, that um, the New South Wales government, and I, I don't know what... what we, we, we're trying to understand their, their uh, motives and their methodology, but right now they're beginning to offer money into, into our circles in that area and uh, start doing things, and we're not asking them. We don't want them to do anything, and we never ask them for anything. But they're coming in and sealing roads, they're coming in and spending money on beautification of towns and um, increasing staff in schools and and we, we're sort of saying, okay, we'll take it, we're not going to knock it back, we're not that silly. Yeah, so if you want to modernise our, our place, well then go for it, but you own nothing, we've got no agreement with you. And we've come to the conclusion, and that's, that's, um, that's a collective uh, decision, that we got nothing to talk to them about, nothing at all. We tell them what we're doing, yeah. and um, and it's taken a while. It's taken me what four or five years, nearly, to convince people that we, we can do it. Um, but nonetheless, they've sort of built the courage up, and we've kept going. And uh, now we've got action on the ground, and it's it's going very well.